welcome everyone to our workshops i have introduced this idea to many of you over call over the progress review sessions uh, the idea behind the workshops is to you know make you practice on decision making along with the topic preparation that you're carrying on so whatever you are preparing right uh, right now uh, we will try to align that preparation with uh, a bit of strategic preparation Uh, which will be helpful while you are taking mocks and sectionals and finally when you are taking uh, the exams so uh, the main focus for these sessions will be to uh, discuss on uh, you know decision making selecting the right questions how to select the right questions how you are comprehending the question when you are reading it what you should be comprehending while you are reading it so those kind of things is what we are going to discuss and uh, you know focus on each and every workshop yes in in certain workshops we might be discussing solutions as well it depends on the section and the topic that we are taken up for that particular workshop but uh, mainly the focus will be on decision making and time management and strategy and those kind of things uh, so without further delay uh, welcome everybody to our live sessions and uh, we'll start of the workshop now so what we are going to do is uh, i'm going to read the premise or whatever is given out here and then on the basis of how i have read so when, whenever i'm reading this whatever is going in my mind i'll also try to uh, say that out loud based on whatever was my thinking you would take a decision on whether you would solve the question right away mark it for review or leave it so i'm going to read this now so just follow the question with me so two cities have population densities of whatever and whatever uh, respectively have the same total population okay and we are looking for the average population densities of the two cities combined okay so uh, decision time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start a poll take a decision all of you okay so i guess everybody has polled in one third of you have decided to solve it right now and two thirds of you have decided to market for review so nobody is leaving that that's a good thing you should not leave this question it's a pretty straightforward question i think the structuring should have happened in your mind uh, i mean for all of you uh, that should have happened i'm going to give you my thoughts on it so when i'm reading this question a few things to take a note of as i mentioned earlier as well so i hope that you notice then when i'm reading this question i did not read those 2000 and 3000 i did not give that uh, enough importance to those numbers Uh, what i knew while i was reading is that i have those numbers with me so i know that uh, the cities have the population densities of this much and this much great the important part the most important part that i felt uh, while i was reading this was that uh, both the uh, i mean the cities have the same total population so this seemed more important to me because what we are looking for is average population of the two cities combined right so when we are looking to find the average out so i have to take care of the constraint right so these kind of things i think we have discussed in classes as well so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to play smart out here so city 1 and city 2 so writing this too elaborately i will not do this much uh, when i'm solving it so the densities are given as 2000 and uh, 3000 right uh, per square kilometer or something so kilometer square or something and uh, because they have the same total population so what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume the population as 6000 in both the cases because uh, both i mean 6000 is a multiple of 2000 and 3000 right so i hope you can understand so this is the number of people per kilometer square right and uh, the population the total population should be equal so i'm just assuming the multiple of these two numbers so since i've taken this up so the area or the square area of the city that is uh that will be 3 km square in the first case and 2 uh, km square in the second case so just think about 6000 divided by how much will give me 2000 and 6000 divided by how much will give me 3000 as simple as that so that when we are looking for the average population i should be combining the two cities so the total population will be 12000 and having a total area of 5 km square so that gives me an average of 12000 by 5 which is 2400 people per square kilometer so now 
I would ask you a important question. So you can reply this in chat. Uh, would you change your decision of solving it right away, uh, especially to those who marked it for review? Okay, okay. So now what you have to do, so you don't have to answer me this. Think about what you actually missed out while you were reading it for the first time. There should have been something that you missed out when you were going through the question for the first time. So uh, try to understand that. Yes, correct. So Varun is, Varun is trying to identify that. So he already mentioned that he missed out on the relation. So he, you are missing out. You, uh, so let, let me try to understand that a bit better, Varun. So you missed out that relationship between the total population of the two cities, right? So that will simplify my problem. Uh, you did not understand that, correct? So also try to understand. See, making a mistake in decisions. I, I, I mentioned this earlier. Taking a, right, a wrong decision right now is never a problem. You can, you can take wrong decisions. That is never a problem at all. What you have to understand is you should learn from those wrong decisions. You should learn what problem happened because of which I took that wrong decision. So this will happen a lot of times in mock. The wrong decision can happen. So don't, don't uh, you know, uh, feel disheartened with that. Just learn from it. Keep learning from it. Let's uh, carry on with the next one. Okay, so uh, again, uh, let me read this question, follow with me, and then we'll take the decision, okay? So the question says, a boy travels a distance of three kilometers to his school by a cycle every day. Okay, distance is given. Uh, he takes 10 minutes to travel. Okay, total time is also given, so speed I can figure out. Uh, reaching his school 10 minutes before the gate is closed. Uh, I, I don't get that un, uh, requirement at this point of time. So reaching a school 10 minutes before the gate is closed, I, I, I don't understand what, what is the reason behind it right now. Uh, if I carry forward, uh, one day his cycle broke down after traveling a certain distance and he immediately started walking to school at 40% of his... Okay, so since I know the cycling speed initially, I know that that, that is known to me. So I can figure out the walking speed, which is 40% of the cycling speed. Uh, thereby reaching a school just a minute before the gate is closed. Right. So now I understand the importance of the 10 minutes before the gate is closed as well. So uh, since I know the total time taken in the first scenario, I can use this information to figure out the total time taken by the boy in the second scenario or this special day. So find the distance he walked. Great. So I hope uh, everybody has followed the question as we, uh, I mean, as, as I was reading it out. So again, time for decisions. So I'm just launching this poll for the second question. Okay, so a lot of people, I mean, almost 70% of you have uh, decided on solving it right now. So uh, I, when, I, when I was reading through the question, I guess most of the structuring was done in your mind itself. I'll just repeat this. So when, when, I, when I'm reading the first part, I know that the distance uh, is known from whatever home to school or something. So three kilometers, that total distance he's traveling is known to me. Cycling uh, time is known to me. So cycling speed, I can figure out, right? Also from that later part, so the 40% of the cycling speed is the walking speed. So from this, I can figure out the walking speed as well. And uh, this last bit, the thereby reaching a school just a minute before the gate is closed. Usually he reaches 10 minutes before the gate is closed. So that's an excess of nine minutes to travel, right? So since initially he took 10 minutes to travel, here, he should be taking 19 minutes to travel. So these kind of things is known to me uh, while I'm reading the question. Not, not the values itself. Uh, values is something I'm, I'm discussing now. But those relationships are known to me while I'm reading this. So again, let me just go ahead with this. A uh, few, few things here. Uh, this is important uh, from objective thinking point of view. If you develop it or start developing it right away, it will help you in the long run. So uh, in the question, we don't have options for this one. Uh, we're looking for the distance you walked in meters, right? So if you're looking for the distance in meters, so the initial distance, I'll straight away convert it to meters, okay? So I'll just convert this to meters, so that will be 3,000 meters. Now, I, I usually find this strange phenomena uh, for people, and that is uh, they always treat the speed in only two units, either in kilometer per hour or meter per second. Uh, but why so? I mean, I can always treat it with any any unit, right? So, for example, in this particular question, uh, most of the information is in minutes itself. So, I'll I'll I'll, I'll just treat the speed in minute uh, meter per minute or something. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the speed of the cycle. So, uh, he covers this in ten minutes, this three thousand meters. So, that will be three hundred meter per minute. And uh, speed of walking 
is 40% of this speed, right? 300. So that will be 120 uh, same unit meter per minute. So I'm not writing this again. So we have 120 meter per minute and 300 meter per minute, right? Now, what I know is usually he can cover the entire thing in 10 minutes. Great, that part is done. But on this day, he covers the entire distance in 19 minutes, having covered a certain distance with this speed and a certain distance with this speed. So a lot of ways comes to my mind that I can solve it out. Can somebody tell me what is the easiest way you can think of solving this question, by the way? Because most of you have decided to solve it right away. So if you have decided to solve it right away, there are some linking that needs to be done, right? Uh, making two scenarios I've already done here, Mohit. Uh, so I hope you can see that there are already these two scenarios, right? Speed of cycle, speed of uh, walking is done. Now, everything that I'm going to work with is in the second scenario itself. So second scenario, there is 19 minutes. I'm going to work with that somehow. Uh, what will be the smartest way to go about this? They both have cycling distance in common. Okay, okay. So you're thinking about some change kind of idea that you're talking about, Mohit? Great. So I'm going to use that offset technique. I've used it in very, pro very many, many different problems, right? So uh, I, I'll use a basic reasoning technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume this 19 minutes. Uh, he traveled. Uh, I'm going to assume this. So let let's say he assume uh, he travels this entire 19 minutes uh, on a cycle. So he would have covered how much distance in that case. So uh, the speed of cycle is 300 meter per minute. In 19 minutes, he would have covered 5,700 meters. Instead of that, he is covering actually 3,000 meters. And that is a drop of 2,700 meters. Now, what I know is every minute that I convert from cycle to walking, there will be a drop of 180 meters, right? For every minute that I convert from cycle to walking. So instead of covering 300 meters in that minute, he would cover 120 meters in that minute, something like that. So I need to compensate this 2,700 meters, right? So in order to do that, how many minutes do I require? So I need to drop this by this much or these many minutes or something. So this will be in minutes, by the way. So I'm not writing the meter, meter, just not to confuse you. So these many minutes should be converted from cycling to walking. Only then you can have a drop of 2,700 meters. And by the way, 2700 is 1800 plus 900. So this is 10 times plus five times. So that is 15 times, so 15 minutes, right? So 15 minutes, he should have been walking and the remaining four minutes, he should be cycling because there's a total of 19 minutes. But I don't care about the cycling. My question is looking for the distance he walked. So in 15 minutes with a speed of 120, how much distance would he have walked? 15 into 120, so that should be 1800 meters. So that will be the answer to this problem. Now take uh, now tell me whether the decision of solving it right away would have been effective here or not. I've, I've redrawn the poll. So everybody start voting again. Okay, there's an absolute flip in the book. Now. So 70% are not marking for review. Okay, great. See, uh, it's not a uh, thing that I'm uh, finding funny or something, but the point is, uh, it's good that you're making these mistakes now because it's not good that you make these mistakes later on, maybe four months down the line when CAT is, you know, another three months away or something. Uh, but please understand the, the, the thing that I was talking about at the very beginning, when the structure has happened in your mind, it's not that every question will be less time consuming to solve, right? So when you're taking those two decisions, so this solving right now and marking for review, both the cases, the structuring has happened in your mind. So how are you differentiating between the two things? You should be differentiating on the basis of the amount of effort that you need to take to solve that particular question. Am I clear with these two things? I mean, from the, first, from the two questions that I elaborated, I'm, I'm not forcing any decision on you. It's completely you. If you solve both the questions uh, in, in the first scan itself, it's your decision to take. If you mark for review both the questions, it's your decision to make. But then please try to differentiate a little bit on the basis of your comfortability as well. So on the basis of your comfortability, it might be feasible for you to, you know, solve it with least amount of effort, or it might, uh, you, you might have a feel that it will take a bit of effort to solve it out. Anyhow, so uh, that's all I wanted to discuss uh, as an introduction uh, to today's session. Once more, so here, I think you clicked in to join the session, right? So this test one will be live now. Yeah, it is live.
So you can click on this take test and uh, start taking the test. 30 minute test from this live analysis of test one, you can join uh, back to the session. Okay, so take the test one, all of you, good luck.